Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holder, and as always, welcome to the channel. Here's the question. What happens if you test a camshaft on the chassis dyno, and it doesn't do what it did on the engine dyno? Is that because engine dynos are BS? Because Richard's BS? Because camshafts are BS? No. Actually, the answers are very simple. What do I mean? And I definitely have the right cam shirt on, having the wrong cam shirt on. Um, I want to talk about camshafts. Uh, this particular test was on an LS. It could have easily been on a 5 liter, could have been on a big block Chevy, whatever. Um, what I want to talk about is uh, comparing gains that we get from a chassis dyno versus an engine dyno, and not specifically the way that you're thinking. <laughs> I want to talk about problems with going from one to the other. I have a video up if you haven't seen it. First of all, thanks to the guys at uh, Airflow Research and Vortec and Brian Tooley Racing for supporting the channel. As always, those guys are awesome. And I promise I'm going to have some interviews with Brian up. And also the guys from Airflow Research and Vortec, et cetera. Uh, I'm going to have interviews up starting, um, I'll try to start that this week, actually. <coughs> um, but what I want to talk about is a, a, a situation that happened. And this happened actually not this thing specifically, but this type of thing has happened a number of times. And it's something that's, I don't know that it's unique to dyno testing because it probably happens in other situations too. But I had a, actually, this was actually a phone conversation that I had with a guy that I, that was asking me, he said, Hey, he was complaining. Actually, <laughs> he said, Hey, I, and this was on a truck Norris cam that he had, he had installed the truck Norris cam because he had seen the videos that I had done on it. And I've, of all the cams I've tested, I've probably tested that individual cam, maybe more than all the rest, maybe not more than the, that comp 54, 469 cam, 459 cam. I, I have to go back and check and see which one of those I've done actually more videos on. But at any rate, so we, uh, he, he bought the camshaft and had it put in his truck and he did it the right way, which I applaud, which was awesome. He took his truck in and ran it on the chassis deck. He said, I'm, I'm going to do it. I'm going to get a baseline. And then with the stock cam, then I'm going to put a cam in. And then we'll do another baseline. And I will see what kind of power we get. I said, dude, that's, 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 that's right up my alley, man. That's my jams. That, that sounds like a perfect way to do it. You know, you can always feel it if it's enough. And a cam swap in an LS, especially, particularly that cam jump, that's going to give you 60 horsepower or more, do certainly sure on the engine dyno. It's going to give you that much of a power gain. You're going to notice that. You're going to, you, you, you should be, if you can't feel 60 extra horsepower, 50 or 60 extra horsepower, you, you, you probably shouldn't be doing the gam swap because it's going to be noticeably faster. And especially if you tune it and it now shifts higher and does all the things, it's going to feel like a, it should feel like a different truck when you put a camshaft in it. It should sound better because it's, you know, it's going to have that cami lope to it, particularly that cam, um, the truck Norse cam has a, has a, an idol, so it's got a noticeable cami idol, so it, it all should be great. And so the guy ran it on the uh, ran it on the chassis dyno, and then did the cam swap. He also put injectors in it because he needed bigger injectors, and then he and then he they did a tune on it. And then he called me. He said, "Oh, see, he said I knew this was all too good to be true. We got you know your your dynos, your your stuff is just all lies. You know, it's all BS." Um, it's just you schlepping cams or whatever. I'm like, uh, let's hang on a second. I said, before I just completely destroy you, because <laughs> one of us is probably doesn't know what they're talking about. I said, but let's go over this. I said, I want, I want to help you solve your problem. I said, because I guarantee you that you're having a problem. I said, I've run that cam certainly back to back versus other things, no less than a dozen times probably more than that now. I said, so I know what it does. And 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 it's been put in lots of vehicles with chassis data testing. And I said, and I know what it does there. I said, I haven't done that. I said, but I know a lot of guys that have. I said, so we know what it does. And what it does on the engine dyno, it's going to do on the chassis dyno because I've taken stuff from the engine dyno and put it on the chassis dyno and we know what it does. I said, so so there is something going on because he, he came back and said, okay, we ran a baseline. We, um, put the camshaft in, we did a tune and he said, we got 31 horsepower. I'm like, well, there, there's obviously a problem. Yeah. That cam's junk. I said, it's not the cam. I said, I know what the cam does. You're nowhere near what that cam should be doing. So please talk to me about what's going on. What else, what else had changed? I said, so let's start off. Did you, first of all, did you, when you did this, did you 
<laughs> did you run the truck on the chassis dyno? Did you leave it on the chassis dyno? Did you change the camshaft and then retune it with your injectors and then run it that day? No, I didn't do that. It took it took more. It took almost two weeks for him to get back to the dyno. I said, okay. I said, so right off the bat, we have something there. I said, when I do my test, it's the same day. I said, given what your truck does and what all these trucks do, if you ran it one day and you ran it the next day, I said, it's it's probably going to be very repeatable, particularly in stock trim. I said, so did you did you optimize the tune when it was stock? He said, no, we just ran it ran it the way that it was. I said, well, when you ran it after that. And, and put the injectors in, put the camshaft in. They said, that, did you then optimize the tune? He goes, yeah, my tuner did, did it all stuff. He said, he did say something about this. He said, this camshaft um, is more prone to detonation than the stock camshaft was. I'm like, that, that seems odd. The, <laughs> the camshaft itself, I don't know that that's going to be more or less detonation sensitive. I said, but... If we look at it, this cam does make more torque through most of the curve than the stock one. Maybe not it off idle, <laughs> maybe not a thousand RPM, maybe not even 1500 or maybe not even 2000 RPM. I said, but above that, it's, it's, it's going to be as good or better than the stock cam. I said, so it's making more torque, more torque, more cylinder pressure. So I said, I, I'm, I'm getting a vibe here. I'm thinking that that could be, we don't see that on the engine dyno because we have, we're running the motor cold. You're not running the motor cold. And so I, I maybe that's possible. Maybe greater cylinder pressure. Maybe it's more prone to detonation. He goes, yeah, the, the guy said, and, and we could hear it. He said, we could only run 21 degrees of timing. I said, well, I don't know what you ran when it was stock, <laughs> but 21 degrees of timing is not enough timing for an LS to make peak power. One of the things that I do when we're running the thing on the engine dyno is whatever camshafts we're running, but if we start with the stock camshaft, we make as much power as that stock camshaft can make. We put it on the dyno, we tune it, we play with the air fuel, make sure the air fuel is right, and then we adjust it and go, okay, there's no more power there. We start adding timing, and as soon as there's no more timing, there's just no more power there. That's what it does. Okay, that's how much it'll make, and it will repeat you know, as long as we have the air temperature and the water temperature and the oil temperature the same, it will repeat just, you know, every pull. It's all good. I said, so that's the way that we do it. I said, so I said, why are you, why is the timing so low? Why do you, why are you not running timing? I said, I know that the timing is going to be lower than what we are able to run. I said, by the way, you're that combination with that can and the camshaft is not, the camshaft really doesn't change the timing very much, if at all. But the amount of timing that you're running is not optimized for that motor. I said, that motor will make peak power at 29 degrees or thereabouts. Whether or not you can run that, there, that could be an octane thing. I said, but it still seems weird to me that we don't see that big a swing in detonation from a camshaft because of cylinder pressure, which is the only thing that I could think would be happening. I said, your exhaust is not clogged. You know, we went through things and he had, he had changed the springs. Like I said, he had changed injectors and stuff. I said, so something else seems weird. I said, did, did, did you change anything else? <laughs> Was there any other change going on? Oh yeah, we did one other thing, but it, it's, it's, it could only make it better. I said, okay, well, that's the kind of thing that we want. He said, I, we, I took the factory air box off and I just put a, a an open filter in there. I said, so you're running the the factory air intake when it was stock and then some sort of, he goes, yeah, it's like a, it's like a open cone filter deal. I said, in the engine compartment, I said, did, when you ran the test, did you run it with the hood closed? He goes, yeah, I asked him to run it with the hood closed so that it would be re <laughs> real world. I said, yeah, that's good. You want, you know, you want it to be what it's going to be out there in the real world, particularly if you're getting detonation because you don't want to have detonation when you're out there running around. So that makes sense. I said, so the, I said, here's, here is what I think is the problem. I said, and I don't know, I'm assuming that you ran it on good gas. He goes, well, it had, <laughs> I, I don't think he gave me an honest answer here. I said, did you run it on 91? So at least you could get, or 91 or 93. I don't remember where this guy was. I'm thinking he was in a 93 zone. I said, but did you at least put premium in it? Well, this is what we had in it. So this is what we ran. I'm like, okay. I said, so there's a couple things going on here. I said, one you have 
I don't know if you've changed the way that the meter is reading. I said, if you think, I said, I think if you've got the tune correct, you got the tune correct, and that's not going to be a problem. So hope, hopefully that's okay. I said, but what I can guarantee you is that you're getting more air temperature, particularly with the hood closed, and it's going to be much more sensitive to detonation in that way than it would be if you just had the stock air cleaner on there, the air box on there, because it's grabbing air from the fender well. I said, so you're you're not getting cold air. I said, forget about how restrictive it is. Probably not at all at that power level anyway. I said, so, and a lot of times I've seen some air intake setups where the stock one did better than the aftermarket one, unless you go and retune everything. I said, so that, that I said, I know the temperature thing is going to be an issue. And that makes me think, okay, that's, that might be more to do with your detonation issue than the camshaft. I said, so, okay, here's, here's what I want you to do. I said, you, I, I'm not going to tell you to put your sock air box back on there. I said, but th this will be very telling for you. I said, here's what I want you to do. Go back to the dyno. Before you do that, run all the gas out of it that you have this 80, 87 and mid grade combination or whatever that you've been put two gallons of premium in. I said, that's not going to get the job done. I said, just put good gas in for this test. Even if you only put five gallons in, do it when it's almost empty, put five gallons in, drive it around, make sure you have all the good gas up there. I said, and at least run premium for the test so that you can tune it and then the knock sensor can take the stuff away. Or you can have the guy put a, you know, a low octane tune in there if you want a low octane tune. I said, but get rid of your hot air intake. I said, that's terrible. I said, if you want to just run it on the dyno, I said, just bring the air intake assembly open the hood and bring the air intake assembly just up out of the hood. So it's not grabbing all of the fan wash out of the radiator and grabbing nothing but hot air. I said, I said, and if you tune it and you do that and you have enough octane and you can put the timing in it that it should have to make the power. I said, because you're not testing the camshaft right now. You're limited by other things. You're limited by this, this certainly a temperature problem and you have no timing in it. So you're restricting the motor from what it can really do. I mean, you're eight degrees away from where this thing wants to make optimum power production. At 28 or 27, it's still going to be right there. I said, but if you want all of it, if you want the last two or three horsepower, or whatever, I said, that's where it's going to want to be. So go do that. And, and long story short, he did. He said, yeah, we we actually put an elbow on it and just put the cone filter up, open the hood, put a cone filter up. We ran it. I put, uh, I think he did put 93 in. He said, we put 93 in it. We ran it. He said he added a bunch more. He added like four or five degrees more timing. He said, and now it's making, it made 51 horsepower off <laughs> at the, compared to the stock setup on the chassis dyno. I said, that's a number that's more realistic and, and kind of what I would expect at the tire given that camshaft because yeah it's it's much the whole thing is much better you know he even raised the shift point so that we could we're you know when i'm running it i can take advantage now more of because the thing he goes he goes honestly maybe all the way down low because i have a stock converter on this thing he goes maybe it doesn't feel quite as good there he goes but but everywhere else he goes it's just it just screams and pulls and you know pulls the 6500 or whatever and it does all things he goes i'm just very excited about it and and so he was very happy and my point is for all of this is that the guy did the right thing. The guy, and, and I get this from, from people from time to time, he did the right thing. He did, he wanted to do a baseline and he did an after test and he paid for the dyno, you know, so that's not, that's not a cheap deal. He did the right thing and was certain that he had all of the data that he needed to jump to a conclusion. <laughs> and the conclusion was that, you know, this guy on YouTube doesn't know what he's talking about or that he's, or that he's trying to promote these cams that don't work or whatever, you know, whatever the thing is. So he did all that and then came to some foregone conclusion, but it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an accurate one. And, and that's why one set of data points is, doesn't always give you the, the entire answer. And that's why when I test stuff, it's much better to test it 10, <laughs> 10 or 20 times so that you can, so you can get lots of data and go, look, here, here's all the times I've tested it. And you've tested it one time and you got this. So got all this against this. Let's look and see if there's not something here that we're missing. So I was more interested in just solving the problem and getting this guy, the thing that I knew he should have, because it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. So you, every time you put that truck Norris cam in something, <laughs> <laughs> it does very well and does exactly what you'd expect it to do given those cam specs 
And so he, after that, he was very, very happy. So it was good. Okay, guys, there you have it. Working together, we were able to solve the problem because that's really all that it was. It wasn't that engine dynos were BS or that the cam was BS or that Richard was BS, at least not all the time. The fact is, there was an issue. We worked together and we solved the problem. And that's really what this industry should be all about. I'm Richard Older. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.